Okay, let's uh, try to create some tests for what we want to be able to see on our website for logging in and logging out functionality. Obviously, we're going to have additional tests show up once we know we can log in and log out that will show up uh, elsewhere that we um, want to modify behavior. For instance, when we don't want to just let anyone delete, we want to make sure that proper users can delete and so forth. But right now, let's just focus on how we know we are properly logging in and logging out. So we're going to create a new file in our features and this is not our user pages spec but it is our login pages spec. And what we're going to do is again we, we're going to require our spec helper so that we get all of our um, help from our spec and the, the files and, and capybara and, and so forth. And so we're gonna describe ooh, we're gonna describe our login pages. And this is gonna look a lot like the beginning of our user pages. Uh, we're going to assume that we're gonna visit some web page on our in our capybara, so we might as well make that subject of, of all our tests to expl implicitly. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, describe our sign in page. Oh, it doesn't. Let's go with sign in page. That reads better. And what we're just going to do is we're just going to go to um, that page. So our visit, and this is a new login path. Right? If we go back to oops, our rake routes command, we'll see the the shortcut for the the path for creating that new and it's new login so we can just say that visit new login path and that will bring us to the page that provides us the form to, to log in and uh, this page should be quite simple uh, it should have content uh, let's say sign in because we want that user to be able to sign in and then everything else uh, should be what they fill in to log in. So we'll be able to check whether that exists by trying to just do that. So there are two possibilities here. We can describe uh, with invalid information. And we can describe with valid information. Maybe this can be account, right? Because it could be valid information, but it's not a valid account information. Those are our two possible scenarios. Either we provide good credentials or bad credentials. So in, in this case, we're just going to make it real easy. We're going to click on our button that says log in. Or, uh, and we should expect that to fail because we haven't given it anything. So that should have our alert. Remember, we created that method. And that's going to be a danger. That's a bad news thing. Um, and I don't know exactly what it should say, but it should say something about something being invalid. Uh, and um, that's a good test for not being able to provide the right credentials. Uh, otherwise, we need to have a user. So let's create our user with factory girl. And once we have that, we can go ahead and fill out our form. So we're going to fill in our username with that user's name. And we will fill in our password with that. So we've got that data. And now we can go ahead 
and click on our button that we tried clicking on earlier, but in this case we've actually filled it in with what should be valid data. And what should happen if we log in are uh, a couple things. One, it should now have a link not to logging in anymore, so, but to logging out. And we want to be able to provide that, that functionality to our user. And the, the link is going to be very specific. It's actually the um, <coughs> login path. And it kind of looks weird, so we might want to fix that. But, but that is the right route right here. When we delete, we're going to delete to the login path right there. And, well, it should not any longer have a link to log in because we are logged in. And the URL to, to that is this uh, new login path right here. And uh, then finally, it should have some sort of alert telling us that we are logged in properly. And that's great. We now have what we, we want for our, our login. We, we should get valid information, not invalid information, and we should have this kind of change in, in functionality right here. Uh, we're going to add some more functionality and we're actually going to do it here because it requires being logged in first. So after we've properly logged in we can um, go ahead and follow by log out. We can actually go ahead and log out. And we can't put this as a standalone action because of that dependency on being able to log in first. The cool thing here is we don't have to fill in any information. All we need to be able to do is click our link that we said exists up earlier that says log out. And we need to do that before we do anything else. And if that is successful, it should be just a tiny bit different before. Now it should have a link to log in. And we already said that's our new login path. And it no longer, so it should not have our link to the logout path that we just clicked on right here because we aren't logged in anymore. And then uh, finally, what we're going to do is we're going to have another alert and we're going to add, uh, add a, another level. It is success, but you know we don't like people leaving our website necessarily. So let's call this an informational um, alert box. We'll let them know that they're logged out. It's, it's not an error, but it's not something that we want to promote as being a good thing. We like them in our website and doing what our website is designed to do. So now we have our functionality for our login and our logout. And so now we can save that and we can go ahead and run our tests and hope to, to get our, our red status because, of course, none of these tests have been implemented yet. And that's good. They fail as expected. And so now we can go ahead and start to try to implement them in uh, future episodes.